Hello, hello, beautiful souls. How are you guys doing? It almost feels like it's going to snow here on our vicinity. I'm in New Westminster. So today I was debating on going to travel to Crescent Beach <laughs> to be with the sun. And I figure, hmm, I need to be home and just buy some plants and start writing. But I want to share this um, experience. As you guys all know, uh, probably not all, but <laughs> I've been channeling these galactic beings and putting a book for the Equinox. It's called Galactic Blueprints on December 21, 2021. So I was asked to do this by my uh, Masters of Light. So today I was woken up at three in the morning and it was wild because um, the energy was off around my space. So I got up and I decided to read some, bo some books and I think I was reading the Pleiadian Agenda because I'm, I'm doing a lot of research and reading. And lo and behold, it went to, um, I'm going to show you the book so you, can, you guys can follow the Pleiadian Agenda. I met Barbara Han Clow probably around, hmm, not sure, probably 2010. And uh, her and her husband, Jerry, I've listened to her workshop and I was really intrigued and... Then I started um, opening in our community, the meetup, and the first bunch of those guys that were coming to my home, I opened my home, we were studying the alchemy of nine dimensions. We used to have this uh, beautiful soul. She's a scientist. I think Leticia who used to uh, come to my home and because she's a scientist, her mind is more expanded and open. And we were studying the, uh, the alchemy of nine dimensions. So that was 2008. So it's been 12 years that I'm uh, studying the Akashic records. And last night, I was woken up and I start. I, I just randomly opened this book and it went into the uh, reptilian race. So I just want to open it. Okay. So probably <laughs> it's hard to hold this phone and then do all these things. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to read what I found out because I have a lot of experience with the reptilian race. And those are the malevolent reptilians. When I opened the Akashic Records in 2009, I met this uh, reptilian um, hybrid that she was morphing in front of me. And I could literally sense her energies when I saw her. And during the um, Skype session, that was actually the time when Avatar, the movie, was out. And I was having this morphing reptilian in the Skype session. And I noticed, I asked her if she's aware of her um, energies. And she, this lady had a cancer of the blood, so she thought she was going to die. And so she asked the reptilian to um to reveal you know the, their entity to me so i could help clear the karma so what i noticed on uh this skype session with this lady who was morphing she asked me to take pictures of her so i had like 864 pictures for three hours i was doing a session and I actually told her, can I ask my boyfriend to come and see this? Because this is so unusual. So I want to know. Because my, my ex-boyfriend used to study 
ancient civilization for 10 years. She used, he used to build pyramids. So he was the one who brought me all this information about these different races of the aliens and galactic beings. So I asked my boyfriend to watch this lady in Skype session and literally she was morphing. So I have an investigative mind and during that time, I was taking pictures and every time she talks about her um, loneliness, her suicidal uh, thoughts, her sex abuse, her abandonment, she has uh, her children abandoned her. So she's literally like dying of this blood, uh, cancer of the blood. And I was, I was so taken aback. I was crying because I was so new with this healing method, Akashic Records, on 2009. So she was like, you know, just started coming uh, too strong for me. And what happened with that malevolent uh, experience, I was literally uh, beca became like a switch was turned off. So I wasn't able to function in my daily life because I was a new bee in uh, this healing modality. I, I was literally um, entrained. Like it is an entrainment when your sacred space is not... Um, so the Arcturians calls this is like a cosmic egg. Your astral, your ether, etheric body should be like an egg, okay? So for all people that are listening here, I'm, um, I'm asking you to, to, rem to create a ritual of creating a sacred space and also relationship with these masters, whoever the masters of light that are coming to you. So today when I woke up, I was, I was given this uh, chapter to read and it was actually um, creating a uh, more, more expansive knowledge on how the lizards, um, the, the passive side of these uh, entities, right? They are actually attuned to the electromagnetic energy. So like the snakes, you know, they crawl on Mother Earth. So the Kundalini energy is actually stronger for reptilians because they, they're uh, slithering in, in, um, in Earth. Here's my cat. Hi, Gaia. See, <laughs> I get so much love. Gaia is actually my uh, kind of like my protector companion. So the reptilians, lizards or snakes are attuned to the telluric realm, which is the source of the electromagnetic energy that activates our kundalini in our bodies. So envision these uh, lizards are crawling in Mother Earth. So they have a lot of... Uh, electromagnetic uh, force, right? So the Kundalini energy, for those who are not aware of Kundalini, it is like this uh, Shakti, this light within us, in our spine, all the way from our root chakra to our um, crown. So it's like this energy that goes back and forth, this uh, cosmic light. So then it clears all our, our chakras. But if you're not um, if you're starting in this uh, ascension process, you can burn your 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 brain, uh, your neuro pathways. So you have to really see a uh, spiritual healer to ground you. And in this ascension process, we need to really ground ourselves. So I do walk a lot, and I stay in nature by the ocean by the sunshine because Vancouver doesn't have uh, a lot of sunny days. So I take advantage of the sun. I go and uh, run to the ocean. So Kundalini energy is an electromagnetic energy that reorganizes our bio biological species back into the 12 strand DNA form. So if you guys are following me, 
in Atlanteans, our our when we were star we when we were being star seeded by the Lyrans and the Syrians um, star system, we started for, from twelve strand, and those twelve strand. I actually wrote that down because I was walking with my uh, soul brother yesterday in Jericho Park and I, um, you know, when your channel is like, I just really have a pen and just start writing because I can't, I can't handle all this uh, knowledge and information that I'm receiving if I don't write it down. So here is like a 12 strand. So I'm going to so during that time our, our ancient uh, timeline we have the the gift of telekinesis by location photographic memory highly psychic we have clairvoyance uh clairaudient that's like when you're hearing uh spoken words clairsentient clair Clear cognizant. Uh, we also have um, we c we could decode patterns like archetypes, right? And we have the, we have uh, no veil. So our third eye, which is actually the activations of our pineal gland. So pineal gland is in between the hollow grooves of your left and right brain. When it's activated, your ter third eye is uh, amazing. <laughs> so lifting that veil of separation, we call Lord Horus. And uh, Lord Horus uh, created this uh, relationship with me, actually. When I tap into my ancient Egyptian uh, past life, there are so many uh, goddesses that are living right now in this uh incarnation so tapping into your akashic records you're able to see your past life is like uh literally parallel so this is what we call living simultaneously with uh, other timelines because there are really you know <laughs> Time is just um, an illusion that, uh, that was created by um, other forces. So when I was reading this morning, around 3 o'clock in the morning, I, um, I tapped into reptilians who they actually hold the force of the pure Kundalini energy in relationship to the intelligence of Gaia. So Gaia is a sentient uh, being. So Mother Earth was actually called the intergalactic um, center, communication center of all these races that are coming. So the, the lizards are the temple keepers of Gaia, of the biological systems of our Earth. They are our grounders, our keepers of the force. That's why sexuality is actually a very strong uh, portal or force of energy that keeps us grounded into Mother Earth. Especially when you're channeling, when you're receiving a lot of downloads, cosmic information, you have to ground this and that kundalini that rises from your uh, sacral root chakra all the way up to the tantra this is the tantra this is what we called when we're having tantric sexual energy but because of religion and all these uh, unconscious imprints domination of our human uh, species like priest in the Catholic Church, right? Like it's, it's unnatural for a human being not to have uh, sexual energy. 
So that is kind of manipulation towards uh, that system. And so, you know, it's being revealed to us, but we, we're still, well, other people, not me. <laughs> I got out of the system because of the um, investigation that I've done. And uh, it, 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 it's so, it's so, it's so out of this world that how I was able to open my home and started healing people, people with no religion or whatever gender, because these are all the, the things that separate us from our true essence. So anyway, I'm going to stick up with this reptilian. They are the temple keepers of Gaia, right? As energy intensifies, Gaia begins to emit more consciousness. So astronom astronomical point of view, this is a, Gaia has an intelligence that is activated and the reptilians who remain on earth are the ones who hold this incredible intelligence. They hold the intelligence within their physical bodies. Okay. Then I went on more readings and it, it went into uh, Nibiru and the Anunnaki. So I'm going to do more, um, kind of like a short, this is, uh, I, I just want to really focus on like, like this uh, part of the reptilian. So I went to sleep and I had a lucid dream. And in the lucid dream, this snake was crawling in my body, like my skin. And I felt this snake and I was able to get it and throw it out. And I called my brother, Marty. I said, help me, you know. And then this snake came up again to my body and I throw it out again. So I woke up from this dream and I realized they were uh, tapping into my consciousness because I was tapping into their consciousness. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, I live in a, a very wild uh, dimension <laughs> because what I read actually comes to me in lucid dreams. And it's just, what do you say, right? So then uh, there is a part of me that actually uh, feel like, I, I, I should be under the radar. Like I shouldn't be talking about this because I'm so passionate to uh, educate people because that's, that's who I am. That's how I feel uh, I am made of as a messenger. So I released the unconscious thoughts and I'm just gonna plug into you, plug in the light. Because I feel the more we talk about light, consciousness, vibration, how we can support each other. We're able to um, interfere whatever is happening in the world. And lo and behold, I tap into Jose Argelius with Gaia Network. It's just, you know, my cell phone just started talking like in the middle of the night and I'm like okay what do you want me to listen to and it's about about time the Mayan calendar and there's actually um I actually have a book of this uh Carl Johan Kalimann the Mayan calendar I also met a um an amazing soul I think it's Paul Alarcon uh, on 2000, probably 2009, before 2012. And I had a long conversation with him. And he wrote also a book about the Mayan calendar. So this is another uh, snippet of information about the sun. And I think I'm just going to stop now and just say um, the sun is our you know, the sun is a star. It's a superstar system. And it produces this uh, source of vitality for living organism, right? And as an organic matter like us, we 
or the animals, the plants, we, we require water, solar radiation, oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, symbiosis. Because life depends on the sun. It's pulsating electromagnetic organism. And what happened is our time was um, hijacked. You know, like the Gregorian calendar, all of these uh, things. It, it, we're running under artificial time. Because the sun actually is organic. So there is no time, no space when you're tapping into your true essence. I've, I've, I've experienced that when I was working in the nursing home for like 20, um, I'm turning on 29 years, but I retired when at, at 55. When my son died, I realized I need to follow my passion. I need to share this communication, this innate intelligence to people. And I literally told my children that I'm leaving a legacy. I would write 24 books if I die at 77. <laughs> and this is for my grandchildren because, you know, we got to do the things that we need to do. And this is time. This is the real essence of time. We're not in this physical body forever. Of course, our, our soul are eternal. We're always communicating. We're always um, sending uh, people's insights, dreams, right? But right now that you're in your body, we need to understand how we can help evolve our our earth so what I received from this um, amazing teacher Jose Argelius is that the Sun is actually our uh, source of vitality right and our planet is an intelligent uh, system capable of receiving information and other um, cosmic radiations from solar flares, from all these uh, planets, our solar system, the galaxies, the photon belt. We are turning, our human brain is turning into becoming a bio-solar telepath. So we're, we're, we're shifting into these um, activations like uh, a sun worshippers. That's why most people are shifting into vegan lifestyle, vegetarian, Jews, Britarian, fasting, because our system is shifting into a mental, spiritual light being. So then it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. And uh, mostly um, the star seeds, the new generations, our, our children that are coming into the system are, are programmed with this. They have this um, highly intelligent, highly, they are highly intelligent. They recalibrate, you know, they came here to help us. If you, if you tap into, um, I said I was going to just, just talk a little bit, but then I end up talking more. <laughs> so I started uh, studying. I've studied her work, Dolores Cannon, the quantum hypnosis. But right now, because I'm so passionate to get all these informations that people can, can understand in layman terms, I, I like to simplify how, how we are evolving and how technology has became, you know, this is an artificial time that we are running on. 
our energy, communication, transportation, gl globalization are all based on artificial time. Like we lost our organic uh, ways of um, living, the ways our being, like the cellular phone, the, the technology affects our personal psyche because you, 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 instead of going within and tapping into your intuition, your clairvoyance, you just Google everything <laughs> and there it is. It's like a, this fast pace, right? So, hopefully, in, 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 this, uh, in this chaos that we are in, this is actually the disintegration of our current system, which, were, which was predicted on 2012, but the effects are now, are now here. That people will be, high, will be educated, and that we will be uh, one in uh, unison to harmonize because it all starts within. So your solar plexus is so important. It's your navel area that connects to the central sun, Ra. And this is your trust, believing, surrendering, and releasing and letting go of all this uh, illusions and fear based emotions these are all imprints from our old dna we are now rising into this 12 strands dna which is actually building our rainbow light breastplate which was you know um our old priest the high priest wears these uh, 12 crystals breastplate which helps you in your vibration. And look at my, um, I wanna share my baby here. I don't know if I could lift her. Oh my gosh, she's really heavy. This is um, my new baby. So sending you the uh, healing energies of the Apophyllite. Helping you activate your masculine and feminine energies integration. <clears throat> the Apophyllite holds the Akashic records of our collective consciousness, the ancient records. And um, the pyramids, um, crystal formations helps you to align to your mind, body, and spirit, raising our consciousness, the evolution of a uh, carbon base into a silicone crystalline fields of our human um, existence, activating your 12-strand uh, DNA. And you can visualize this uh, rainbow. So the being, the ancient um, ancestor, the Apophyllite, is here in our um, vibration, in our energy fields, to raise and recalibrate any lower frequencies that we have been trapped or entrained we now let go and release creating this strong force field around our aura our etheric body our holographic fields crystalline fields bio ethereal fields creating that cosmic egg around you with the arcturians star beings assisting us 
connecting us to the temple of the Arcturus. And as you uh, transmit these energies, high frequencies, you're able to feel these electrical currents in your body system that will release any stagnation, any blockages from all your chakra energy centers, the 12 chakra energy centers. In the presence of the crystal divas, ascended masters, the galactic beings of light. And we thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And yeah, I will uh, plug in and share my experiences. Love you guys. Namaste.